right, class, let's move on to the next part of the chapter. Um, I just take the materials price variance. Now we're going to look at the labor rate variance, the labor efficiency variance, and it actually works in the exact same way that materials price and materials efficiency or materials um, price and materials quantity variances work. Uh, let me point something out before we go through this example, though. The textbook does go over some uh, journal entries for those variances. Uh, these are on page 955. Um, you're not going to be tested on that. None of your homework will have you doing those journal entries. If I were you, I would take a look at them because they're pretty simple. But I just didn't want to get into any sort of journal entries in this class. But most of you have had accounting 111 and 230 and understand journal entries. So you can see those and make perfect sense of them. We're just not going to go over them. All right? So let's move on to the labor rate variance. If you have your textbook, which I recommend you do have, on page 957, we're going to go through this example in the textbook. Once again, it's the boats. We're building these boats. And each boat needs to have so many hours of work. And we're going to look at the actual rates. Well, you may say, well, we know how many, what the rate is for every employee. How can that change? Well, the rates can change if our employees are working too many hours, you know, because then you add overtime. So then what happens is that average rate can change. You may have newer employees, older employees. Uh, newer employees might get paid less, but it's going to take them longer. Older employees that have been there for a long time, you know, might get paid more, but they're faster, they're quicker, they're more efficient, better quality possibly. So who do we want? Well, I don't know. We've got to take a look at the variances and take a look at these employees and see how they're doing. Well, let's take a look first at our labor rate variance. To calculate that, we're going to take the actual hours times the actual rate. So we're going to take all the hours that we use during this time period to make these votes times the actual rate. Then we're going to take the actual hours once again and compare it to the standard rate. What should the rate have been? How much do we, on the average, pay our employees per hour? So notice here, the rate variance, since it's a rate variance, what's going to change is the rate, and we're going to keep the hours the same. All right, so the first, first one says, well, our actual hours were 7,880 times an actual rate of $20.50. So this gets us uh, 161,540. So this is what we actually paid our employees for this time period to make these 100 votes. This is what we paid. Well, let's take our actual hours. Once again, it's the 7880. We would know that number because we keep track of time. Don't we pay our employees? If we pay our employees, trust me, we're keeping track of the time. So we know how many hours, actual hours, went into this. Now we're going to compare that to the standard. What our engineers and accountants and management think should be the rate. Okay? Now this can be different because we may have had people working overtime and stuff. Okay? So the actual rate was, I mean, I'm sorry, the standard rate was $20. So our actual rate ended up being more, probably because of maybe overtime or something. Okay, so $20 times the 7,880 gets us 157,600. Okay? Now, this is going to be favorable or unfavorable? It's going to be unfavorable because our actual rate was higher. So it's going to be an unfavorable variance, and we just take the difference between these two, and that gets us 3,940. So that is our labor rate variance, 3,940. This information has to be given to us in a problem. We can't just make this up. So that's what makes this chapter kind of easy, similar to the budgeting chapter. The budgeting chapter, they have to give us all that information and then we plug it into the budget. Whatever budget they tell us to, to make, we make it based off of whatever, whatever information they give us. Same thing in this chapter. Okay? You're going to have to memorize this stuff up here. Or just learn it. It makes perfect sense what you're calculating. But you're going to have to know this. I will not give you this, and I will not give you the budgets on the text. You're going to have to take the information and prepare this. Calculate your variances. Calculate your budgets from the previous chapter. Okay. So let's move on now for the labor efficiency variance. You're going to take your actual hours, 7,880 times your standard rate. Now notice, this is easier than the materials variance because these actual hours don't change. So this equals that. 
Whereas in the previous video, that wasn't the case with materials. Because with the price variance, it was materials purchased. With the materials quantity variance, it was materials used. When you're talking about labor, you don't have a purchased and used. Whatever our employees work, they work. If this is their actual hours, that's their actual hours. They don't have a purchased and a used. It's the same. Okay, so we've got this, which we've already calculated, the 157,600. So I'm just putting this in second time. You wouldn't have to if you didn't want to. You could just use this number and bring it over. Now we're going to compare that to the standard hours times the standard rate. Well, we already have our standard rate. It was $20. What's our standard hours? Well, remember, how many boats did we build? We built 100 boats. So now what do we need to know? How many hours should have gone into each boat? Well, you have to read through the problem. If you read through the problem, it says every boat requires 80 hours. That's what management thinks should go into each boat. It should take 80 hours of our employees' time to build that boat. So if we have 100 boats times 80 hours per boat, that gets us 8,000 hours. 100 boats times 80 hours per boat. 8,000 hours times the $20 per hour gets us 160,000. So this is what our actual hours, this is our standard. So we know right now our variance is going to be favorable and the difference is 2,400. When you take the difference between these two, it's a $2,400 difference and it's favorable because our actual hours, how many hours we used, was less than we thought. We thought we were going to need 80 hours per boat for the 100 boats, that's 8,000 hours, but our employees actually did it in 7,880 hours. So that's good, we have a favorable variance. So now we've learned the four variances, you need to know all four of them, how to calculate them. You, I've gone over in detail each one of them. Uh, your homework problems will have you doing these multiple times to make sure that you understand them. So, good luck, and I'll see you in the next chapter.